and I hope it'll be a blessing to you. You might wonder, how does a preacher get all of his sermons? Well, out of the Bible, through experience, through people calling. I was talking many different hours of the night last night, and many times in a desperate need, someone dying, someone that has someone dying, I receive calls from all over the nation in these times, and and you're suddenly at a loss as to what to say, but suddenly the, the gift of the Holy Ghost moves and you feel it, and the Lord begins to talk, and uh, you're able to help people, and many of them are healed. I've had my phone to ring in the wee hours of the morning. I would many times be dreaming, and the very thing that I was dreaming about, I was being called about from a missionary that was in desperate need, a wife at the point of death, and I spoke the word to them, the word of faith, and she was healed on the spot. The Lord knows what's going on worldwide. We only know what's going on right around us here, but there's a whole world out there in sin, wounded to death. Only the great physician can ever bring them out of the pit that they have fallen in. But he is a specialist in pulling people from the deepest pit called sin that no one else can reach you there the doctors may help you physically the psychiatrists may help you mentally but only Jesus can help you spiritually and heal your wounds that were caused by sin no one else can heal them no one else can remove your sin. All they can do is to get you to tread it down, but it'll come right back up. But I'm going to talk to you about somebody tonight that forgives and forgets. And he's never refused to forgive sin. He still forgives. I have a lot to read, so you may, you've already been standing, so I'll let you... Stay seated there. Reading here in First John, the fourth chapter. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits which are of God, whether they be of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world, hereby know ye the Spirit of God, Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist. Whereof ye have heard that it should come. And even now already is in the world. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. I want you to notice here that God's children, the Bible said, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world, and we have overcome the spirit of the Antichrist, And my text tonight will be beyond spiritual warfare. 
This morning, just as I got out of the bed, my phone was ringing, and I picked it up, and a minister said, Brother Barnes, I'm in trouble. Satan has been on the trail, and I'm at the end of the rope. I got to have help. And he went on and on and on with all the depression and all the fear and all the torment. And I was listening. And all of a sudden the Holy Spirit began to speak and that's why I'm going to preach to you tonight what I preached to him. So this is where I got my sermon. Preaching to a preacher early this morning as I got out of bed. Beyond... Spiritual warfare. Is there a place like that? Is there a place that we can reach where we're out of spiritual warfare? Is it possible? Yes. For the Holy Ghost filled. To Jesus' name. The holy people born again can rise to a place where they'll be beyond spiritual warfare individually. But not for the whole world. But when we go into the enemy's territory, we will have spiritual warfare there. But with the whole armor on that Ephesians talks about, we'll win so easy we have it wrong Jesus fights for us while we fight the enemy he stands within us fighting for us because we're born again we're not supposed to fight the devil mentally and physically and every other way in our own Holy Ghost filled bodies we may do it but there is a place to where the Lord takes over and the battle's over. You're fighting the enemy out here in Jesus' name. The Lord never called me to defeat the devil. He never called me to destroy the devil. He did that himself. I could not anyway. But Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. And he did a third job on the cross. There was not one thing left undone. He defeated the devil for me. He defeated the devil for you. So greater is he that's within you than he, the devil that's in the world. The power of the Holy Ghost is greater than all the power of the enemy. The time has come for us to step into this higher dimension and stop fighting the devil, imaginary fights, mental fights, thinking that he's always on our trail. I doubt if very many of you have ever met the devil personally. He can't be everywhere at the same time. God can, but he can't. Amen? He has to travel, just like you and I. He can't be in two places at one time. With six billion people on earth, it'd be pretty hard for him to visit all of them in one day. But the Lord can. His Spirit fills heaven and earth. That's why we are totally and fully protected because he lives with us. First Colossians, I mean in Colossians, second chapter, 15th verse, this is what Jesus did. And having spoiled, spoiled, that's ruined. Having ruined principalities and powers he made a show 
of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Jesus is the one that spoiled the devil. He's the one that triumphed over the devil, not for himself, but for me and you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He could only be tempted when he allowed the devil to do it. He lived above it. Amen. And he said, the works that I do shall you do also. And greater works than these shall you do because I go unto the Father. The time has come for us to wake up and clear up our minds mentally and go to work for the Lord and stop having to work and worry about ourselves day and night. <laughs> praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Where sin abounds, sure, he is strong, the devil. That's the only place where sin abound. He's strong there. But where the Holy Ghost abounds, he is as weak as a cat. He has no power there. Because Jesus said, I have all power. And behold, I give you all power over the devil. That's what the real, genuine, born-again experience will do for an individual. But I have to counsel people, talk to people, listen to people that has imaginary sickness. It's really not real. They see imaginary devils. If a mouse runs against a heel, they'd say it's the devil. Everything's the devil. Uh, he's behind every tree. And behind every stump, behind every rock, and in every house and every other place, devils, devils, devils. I want you to know that old Lucifer himself, he don't have his keys anymore. Jesus took the, his keys of death, hell, and the grave. Brother, you talk about cleaning house. He cleaned house when he don't have and have key, even have the keys to his own house. He no longer has the power of death. He no longer has the power to take you and I who are born again to the prison below when we die. He don't have that no more. That's lost. Praise the Lord. Aren't you glad? You'll go up instead of down. Our biggest problem is sin in the flesh. Sin brings much trouble with Satan and demons a million miles away. Sin in the flesh is still at work. And we lay it on the devil. Amen. Pretty soon I read in the Bible, in Revelation, the 20th chapter, that a great big angel's coming down and going to wrap a great big chain around the devil's neck and going to cast him into the pit. And for a thousand years, people are going to live on this planet Earth, but they're still going to sin. And they're still going to get sick and die during the millennium. Who are they going to lay that off on? Old Slewfoot's in the pit with a chain around his neck. Can't do a thing. I want you to know, when sin entered the human race, when sin entered the body, it's there to stay until the Prince of Peace comes and wipes it out amen with not a devil a demon on earth you probably wouldn't know the difference in the morning in the morning they'd still be going to the honky-tonks they'd still be drinking the beer 
they still be shooting the do dro drugs right on because sin is in the flesh. It's in the flesh. And he came to kill sin, destroy sin. He alone can do it. So don't try to lay it all off on the devil. He does as much as he can. But when man sinned in the Garden of Eden, all these old carnal desires was planted there. And had the Lord moved the devil off the planet then, still been the same man, been living in rebellion and hate and wars and rumors of wars. When will we wake up? You can't turn over a new leaf and say, I'm going to do this and do that. Not until sin is nipped in the bud. Amen. I used to turn over a new leaf, and it's ten times worse than the last time I turned one over because I couldn't stay with it. I couldn't do what I said I was going to do because sin was present. What I would do good, evil was present. But the wise pastor has learned that most of his trouble in the church is caused by sin in the flesh not demons, just sin in the flesh, carnal, the old carnal man coming alive. And unruly human spirits. The devil said, I got it made. Until they get born again, they'll sin without me being there. They'll sin without my encouragement. Uh, they'll just invent sin and go on because it's in their old flesh. Amen. He does rise up in high places and try to influence nations. He's trying to get it to church now. He would like to stop the church worldwide by great persecution. You need to wake up and pray. For our nation. Pray for our leaders. Amen. Because while a lot of churches call me and say the devil's down at my church, oh, he's not. He's up at the White House. That's human spirits he's dealing with down there. That's the old flesh. The Apostle Paul had it right when he said, I die daily. I get up praying. I fast. I die daily. That's the only way to keep the old flesh under subjection. Die. If we walk in the Spirit as He is in the Spirit, we'll not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Praise the Lord. So then how? Let's get to the cream now how can I get beyond spiritual warfare the first step is to be born again of the water and the spirit let the one that's greater than the devil and all of his imps come into your heart and life then you could rear back and say greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Amen. I said to the preacher this morning, and I do know you have to fast for other people, but I said I wouldn't spend any time fasting to get the devil off of me because I'm born again, baptized in his name, covered with the blood. Amen. Have the faith of God in my life. It's there. Amen, it's there day and night. He's in there to fight for me. He's in there to win for me. I am called to go out and help other people while he takes care of me. I'll tell you what, be a lot of you, if you'd do that, would find 
He'd be very happy to take care of your problem if you would go and do the work he's called you to do. Now, how? Practice. Listen closely. Practice the presence of God. We know we, they are there. Think about the presence of God. Let your mind ever be upon him. Don't practice the presence of demons. Amen. Don't practice that. A lot of people, they, they go to bed thinking about the devil, get up thinking about the devil. That's, I don't like to think about the rascal. Amen. I, I just don't. I don't like him. I don't like him enough to think about him. Don't, don't preach about him too often because I just don't like to talk about him. I'd rather talk about Jesus. I'd rather think about Jesus. I'd rather, I'd rather practice. And there's something about when you practice his presence. How you do that? In prayer. Amen. In worship. You know, it's one thing to sit out there and hear me preach. And that's good because you all got ears. You can hear me. But the next step is you must believe. If I'm preaching to you the word of God, then you should believe it. But if you need divine healing, that isn't enough yet to hear it and to believe it. The next step is for you to say in Jesus' name, I believe what he preached because it's the word of God. In Jesus' name, I receive my miracle because it's the will of God. And after you say that, you say it's done. I confess that he's doing the work because he said he would. But you know, most of them said, if I can ever see a miracle, I'd believe. No, the Lord said, believe, then you'll see one. Practice the presence of God. Isn't that better? You ever feel his presence? Amen. Isn't it wonderful? Isn't it thrilling? Isn't it so pure? His presence is so pure. There's no evil. There's no doubts. There's no fear. There's no weary. Nothing but wonderful things flow out of his presence. And you become a different person. All of a sudden, the Holy Spirit begins to flame up inside of you. And suddenly your mind is really charged. And you're thinking good things. I don't know how some people live. They think evil all the time. That is, maybe not killing somebody, but the devil's on my trail. Somebody said, the devil's been after me all day. Praise his name. Look, listen, we... we that's wrong. We're supposed to be after the devil all day. We're to keep him running. Say, yeah, but I'm afraid he might turn around. When he sees that you are a son of Jesus, born again, he sees the word in you. He sees the blood in you. He sees the name in you. He sees the Holy Ghost in you. He sees God's faith in you, and he's going to run. Run, devil, run. I'm not. The Bible said resist him and he'd run. He'd flee. That's getting going. Resist the devil. But, you know, we let him come in and roar, and we do the fleeing. God help us. We'll never rise to that place of peace. I read here in the Bible... In Acts, the ninth chapter, you know, the church had gone through all kinds of ups and downs and troubles and heartaches. The early church had it for a while, but they got to praying. And I'll tell you one thing, they prayed one of the persecutors through. Paul, he got struck down. 
And then after that, the Bible said, then had the churches rest throughout all Judea. And let's see where else. Galilee and Samaria. And they were edified and walked in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost and were multiplied. It don't sound like the devil was there. They had rest now. Somebody had been praying. Somebody had got things set up right. And now they're blessed. And they're at rest. You can't rest if the devil's in a church. So the devil wasn't there because now they have rest. Jesus said, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you what? Rest. Rest, not torment. If you'll just follow me, I'll turn the devil loose on you and you'll be tormented the rest of your life. Some people got that idea about it, but that's not right. Come and follow me and I'll give you rest. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. But it'd have you to think his burdens are heavy, weighting you down all the time. You do that with your mental powers. I like that old song, we need to really practice it. I'll fly away some glad morning, and that should be every morning. I'll fly away. I'll get up on the right side of the bed, and I'll fly away. I'm getting above all of this. I'm not going to get in this mental storm of all kinds of evil thoughts and everything else. I'm going to rise up above it. And there in his presence. Oh, let me walk with you, Jesus. Just let me walk with you, Jesus. Because there I'll find real faith. There I'll find the real joy. There I'll reach a place that doubts will not always be dogged. I'll reach a place of freedom, a place of liberty. For when I do go down on the devil's territory, I'll be so full of God, so full of faith, so full of his presence that demons will flee. Just because they see God in me. The war will be won. Amen. The war will be won. How do you win it? By saying it over and over. Greater is he that's in me. Than any of these thoughts. Any of these fears. Any of these doubts. Any of these worries. Greater is he that's in me. And he that's in the world that's fogging the very atmosphere with doubt, with fear and worry. Oh, there's so many people never live their life out because fear, Satan brings fear and they open the door to it. He brings doubt and they open the door to it. And you know what you let in is your problem then. Rising above it in the place of peace, living by faith. That's a beautiful old song. That feller must have knew something about it. Living by faith, not fear, not worry. Living by faith. Amen. The faith of God that's put in your heart when you're born again. You live with that. Amen. There we are. We have everything within. Everything's within the Holy Ghost. That's the Spirit. Jesus said over and over, It's not me that doeth the works, but my Father that dwelleth in me. I have no power of my own, but of the Father that dwelleth in me. And then he later said, He that's within me, I'm going to send to you when I go back. The same power, the same authority and dominion he had over Satan and his kingdom he placed within his church 
And he said, now it's in your hands. Exercise it. There's a miracle in every born-again belief. There's a miracle in your mouth tonight. Say it. Say it and see it. Say it. Say what God says. Don't try to figure the devil out. Just say what God says about him. Amen? Don't try to figure disease out. Just say what God said. Wife is talking today about Mr. Wal Walden. Man, it brought all the Walmart stores in the world. The other day he died. I mean, the last year I believe it was. With cancer. Now, if money, a man with several billion dollars couldn't get it, how do you think us poor folks can? Medical aid, they had the best that uh, they had for him. And yet, he died because it was in his flesh when he's born. One of the man wants to die. And after this, a judgment. But thank God there's a difference in those that die in Christ and those that die in sin. Because when we die, he never even leaves us in the grave. He's there with us. Lo, I'm with you always, he said, even in the world. And when the trumpet sounds, out of the graveyard we come in. And we'll meet him in the air. We have so many wonderful things we could think about that would be so uplifting and bring so much freedom and so much joy to us if we would. Do you know why people become negative? Always screaming out, why don't God do something? He has. The plan is perfect. If you want to be saved, you can. Your whole being. How to rise above self, spiritual warfare. It's in your own self. You turn yourself completely over to Jesus. And say, Lord, I let go. And I'm letting you live and move and have your being in me. I'm not my own. You bought me with a terrible price. And here I am, Lord. Take care of me. And the Lord will gladly move in and fight your battles for you while you sleep. Amen. Amen. When you don't even know it, he's fighting. Because, you know, I've been driving, and I see yonder's a big, beautiful motel, and we'll stop there. But I get closer by, and I see a sign that said, no vacancy. I keep driving. Find another one. It's late at night, no vacancy. Well, there's no need to stop there. And when you're full of the Holy Ghost, God's Spirit, there's a sign hanging out there, no vacancy. Devil, there's no vacancy here. Pull up. Pull up with God. Amen. And he just keeps walking. But if he sees a sign that says half empty, you know, he's going to stop. So that's why we need to walk with Jesus daily and practice his presence. As they play and say something tonight, I don't know. I close this this morning with this minister with him shouting happy at the victory said I, I got it amen I see it I understand that I'm not supposed to listen to this junk I'm supposed to listen to what he said it's been a long time a lot of you never heard me tell it I went through the lonely dark valley 32 or 3 years ago I'd never went through depression before, but that time I went down. I lost weight to 125 pounds. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't eat. 
And I prayed, and I said, now, Lord, I'm not getting any better. I said, you spoke to me a lot of times in dreams. I wish you'd just speak to me tonight and tell me all about this. Well, he did. I was standing with someone. Must have been an angel. I was more focused on what is going on out there. I saw a little bird sitting in the middle of the floor. He just was shaking like that. Finally calmed down. And then I heard a noise and I saw a huge serpent. That big around come out. He ran his head down just like he's fixing to swallow the little bird. And he's talking to the little bird. Asking, you know, how to eat and all this stuff. He's a smart aleck. A show out. And then the little bird would go to peace again. And the sharp would go back in his hole. And this was repeated about three times. And the next time he came, I said, Lord, why don't he eat that little bird and get it over with? And suddenly, this time, the old serpent's head come right in front of me and sort of paused just a second. And I saw a screen muzzle over his head tied securely around his neck. And the Holy Spirit spoke and said, you're the little bird. The serpent is the devil. He can't destroy you because only with words. He said, because I have him muzzled. I have took care of that. He said, if you'll stop listening to his lies and believe my words, you'll get well. I've been eating baby food. And I said to my wife, cook me a beefsteak. This little bird's fixing to eat. The Lord was revealing to me there that Satan can destroy you with words. He can't do nothing to a born-again Christian because he's muzzled. But he can talk to you. And if you don't read this, he'll get by with some of it. But if you know this book, you know what it says. Let the Word talk to you and tell the devil to go on his way. Amen. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. All right, let's sing. Would you stand? And everybody would like to come down to the front for us to pray a mass prayer.